Today we will be talking about Switzerland, one of the countries where everyone really wants to live in, but we all find it quite expensive. How expensive it is, you will find out in today's video. Hello everyone, my name is Tiana and I'm a strategy associate here at Nomad Capitalist. Switzerland is one of the countries that offers lump sum taxation. Now, their lump sum taxation is not as straightforward as in Italy or Greece, where you just pay a flat fee of 100,000 euros and you're a tax resident with no additional taxes. Lump sum in Switzerland is uh, dependent on many factors. Now, first, let's talk about eligibility. First condition is for you not to be a Swiss citizen. Second condition is that you have not lived in Switzerland for the past 10 years. The third rule would be that you have no gainful activity in Switzerland and that you are not uh, being employed or you have no self-employment within the borders. One of the conditions, uh, besides not being in the country for 10 years, is of course you have to spend time there. You would have to spend six months in Switzerland in order to be claimed as a tax resident. And in addition to that, if you're not a single taxpayer, if you are married, both spouses have to fulfill the requirements I just mentioned, being non-Swiss, no employment in Switzerland, and not residing in Switzerland for the past 10 years. However, for tax purposes, spouses are always regarded as one taxpayer. So as mentioned before, there isn't really a uh, one-time fee that everyone has. There's quite a few negotiations going on with the government on what your lump sum taxation will be. This will depend on your household expenses, how, what is your rent that you're paying. If you're not paying rent, you're owning the place, then they would be assessing uh, what would your rent be if you're renting. In addition to that, they would determine how much money are you spending on entertainment, dining out, and similar and they would be deriving a lump sum fee uh, for you and your family that would be in accordance with your lifestyle. It will take about a couple of weeks to get the results back from the government on your negotiations on what your lump sum tax will be. And of course, keep in mind that being an EU national and being a non-EU national will make a huge difference as EU nationals will pay half the price of the lump sum tax. Also, one more thing to consider is that uh, cantonal laws are very strict in Switzerland and they will vary from canton to canton. For instance, when it comes to uh, Zurich, they have decided they just don't want to have the lump sum taxation. There was a lack of interest, so if you would want to take advantage of this, Keep in mind that this is not a place where you can be spending time in. Instead, you can be going to Geneva or any other um, canton. In terms of taxation, all of them will have different thresholds. And there are thresholds on the minimum revenue and the threshold on minimum tax to be paid. So if we're talking about different cantons, and let's take, for instance, Geneva, and we're talking about EU nationals, the minimum revenue requirement would be equal to 400,000 Swiss francs and your minimum fortune, that would be 440,000 Swiss francs. When we're talking about the non-EU citizens, we're talking about the minimum revenue of 750,000 Swiss francs, while the minimum fortune would be 825,000 Swiss francs, which is a huge difference, as the tax that is going to be paid is doubled based on their minimum revenue uh, they're going to be paying taxes on. Now, Geneva is uh, not the most expensive, but also not the cheapest canton to be in. Uh, let's say we have Valais, where if you are a EU national, your minimum revenue threshold would be 250,000 and your minimum fortune would have to be 1 million Swiss francs. Where if you're a non-EU citizen in the canton of Valais, you would have to have the revenue of 700,000 Swiss francs and about 2.5 million uh, minimum fortune. Now, when you see all of these differences in costs, we're talking half of hundreds of thousands of Swiss francs, it could be beneficial if we're talking about a whole plan that would involve taxes and immigration. If you actually applied for an additional passport that would lead you to an EU citizenship for you to actually claim the benefits of living in Switzerland under the lump sum taxation. Let's say, for instance, there are options of acquiring Maltese citizenship by investment. It is quite a hefty donation. However, you can become an EU citizen in about 18 months, or you can work your way towards obtaining a passport in countries like Portugal, Greece, that have um, some sorts of visas or golden visas and would help you naturalize and obtain an EU passport. Once you have an EU passport, then you can claim the benefits of lower lump sum tax in Switzerland. As you can see, it is not as simple and plain as I'm going to Switzerland, I am non-EU citizen or EU citizen, what is the tax I'm going to pay? There are going to be many factors that will be involved and the careful planning will be required. 
if you believe that Switzerland is definitely a place where you would want to go and you don't mind paying a higher lump sum tax and living in Switzerland six months of the year, you can be contacting us on our webpage by hitting the apply button or just reading about this to get more information on nomadcapitalist.com. Thank you for watching.